is my beat. The exciting drama of people who walk the great white way. With Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. There comes a time on Broadway, a little known time, when night takes its hour to die. When neon buzzes fitfully, dies. When the spectacular starts their final circuit. And the features turn a corner, go away. Lonely time and limbo when the street is layered with the imagined echoes of the screen. So walk it and feel it. The ending is something or another. And Broadway's clock spins fast. And east now, walk it toward the river. And its special night sound and smells and its curve of waning moon. Stop and consider this thing. All right, boys, put it down. It looks like this girl's been in the river more than a couple of hours, Danny. Yeah. I'd say about a day. Hold that light still once in a while. It's a little damp. I'd like to figure that. It's all the light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Here, yeah, back of the neck. Mm-hmm. Could have hit something out there, a log, anything. Maybe. Sure, pretty girl. Real nice features. Mm-hmm. Hold that light still. Just try it, Michael, then to see what kind of a reaction you get. <whistles> Lila Hunter. I'm yeah. mistaken about it. No mistake, Michael. I'm Lila Hunter, all right. In the river? How do you figure? Hey, I asked you something, Danny. The whole police force is out looking for us for suspicion of murder. She's in the river. How do you figure? That's a good question, Michael. It's got to get answered. Yeah. Hey, you want me to wait here for technical? Well, sure, I'll wait. So, river and the end of night with swirls of mist. And on the wind, the cry deep in the steamer's throat. The muted splash of oil slick waters. The musty odors of night-ridden waterfront and the chill gleam of dimming reflections. And dark shadows and alley shadows gathered at this moment at the edge of night. Veiled in mist, summoned by the girl who has slept away a part of her dying in river depth. And this is her June past the hour, at the end of night. Wait with it a while. Give it into the hands of the official handlers of the dead. Leave it. And on a cot in a squadron at headquarters, sleep until daylight strikes you between the eyes. And wake with the emptiness still heavy on your back. And walk a corridor to your office. And the door that opens into another day. I kept it hot for you, Danny. No? Oh, thanks, you know. I rented the use of technician Gordon's bunks and burner. Rented? So he charged me a bound. When I explained it to him that it was your coffee I was keeping hot, he wanted to up the house. I sneered on him. The off-quoted Tartaglia sneer. This broke Gordon's back down to a dime. Here, then. Part two. Hot coffee and a buttered Zimmerman bum. Oh, thanks. Do you know? Oh, uh, here. What did it do? Forget that? it, then. Forget it. Some other time you'll save me back for King Burgers as well. For free. <clears throat> we have matters of more important to discuss, Danny. You and I. Now, what have you think? Your money is in my hands, Danny. First, I need to deceive Lila Hunter. Hmm? What about her? Your diagnosis that she had been in the river maybe a day has been confirmed by our good doctor, Sensky. And the bull's back of the neck? In the opinion of the good doctor, could have come from a source with intent to kill by drowning. Could also have come from a hitting a piling or a piece of flotsam or a... Je- uh, all right. What else? What else is it meant the murder she was suspected of committing, for which all points bulletins were issued on her, from which she was a fugitive. Did you bring me the one down on it? I found a note on my desk this morning where you left it, Danny, and I have brought you the rundown. Mm-hmm. Per your request, per it as follows. Lila Hunter wanted for the murder of Marty Scott. Marty Scott suspected and wanted for a recent bank robbery upstate, netting 40 grand. Then found shot to death in Lila Hunter's apartment two nights ago. His bag packed, no Lila, no bank bill. You care also for a resume with a rundown from technical, Danny? No, yeah, I care for it. <clears throat> Marty Scott murdered with Lila Hunter's gun. Gun found later the night of his killing in an alley trash can. Checked by our boys, then by ballistics. Gun was licensed to Lila Hunter. Bullet from gun killed Marty. Time established as 5.30 to 6 of that. Hey, you, you. Hey, nothing is considered well, proper. They right? told me you were the one to see about Lila. Glenn. They told me you were in charge of her death. They told me you woke her from the river. Who are you? Tommy Hamilton. Memory of a man. Memory of a poet. Why no? Skid Row bum. 
Carla was nice to me once. I'd like to drag from a glass of wine to stick. Here. Five hundred dollars. Take it. For what? For the burial of a child that once was. For the wrapping in earth of Lila. And the stone and the blood red rose on her grave. Lila deserves more than part of field. I buy it for her. I'm rich, and I buy nice things for the dead. Where'd you get it? A, a man like you, where do you get five hundred? mine to give. Where'd you get it, Tommy? I uh, left out a friend. Tommy Hamilton, also beggar. I begged, and a kindly man threw it to me. Who? Oh. Kindly man. Walks, did well, nod, smiles, listens, throws money in a gutter. Smiles when he scrounged for it. Very kindly. Tell me who he is. Who gave the beggar five hundred dollars? Reflection of a man, Mike Ryan. Now about Lila. I want Lila to have the nice things of death, all the little luxuries, the perfume. Another question, Tommy. How does a man like you know a woman like Lila? I told you. You didn't know her, did you? No. 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 Then Mike Ryan sent you here with that money. Yeah, I, I run errands from sometimes. This was nice. Hold him, Gino, until I talk with a kindly man. Oh, 
Now, this is a day that it is. A policeman looking for a girl lost in the pages of my hotel register. <laughs> How many years back do you want, mister? I have them piled in stacks in my room. And tomorrow's girls, I could write their names myself for you. Well, what's the treasure, mister? This one. Molly Drew. Oh, that one, huh? Molly. Ah, hmm? uh, you wouldn't have liked her anyway. She's a flitter. I looked in on her this morning, and she put it away. That's how it is with you, honey, sir. You tear her name out of my book. And the others on the page? You tore them. Show me the room she had. Sure, sure. I'll show you the room where Molly Drew slept or was awake. Myself, I couldn't tell you which. Well, come on along. There's things of her still around. I ain't had time to clean. You couldn't mind, huh, Mr. Makes you glad, huh, Mr.? Well, I'll leave you alone with it. Because I know how it is. to provide medical care and nutrition to the underprivileged children of the world. You are doing this through UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund. Created by the General Assembly of the United Nations in 1946, it did such fine work in helping the children in war-devastated countries that in 1950, it was decided to shift the emphasis from emergency relief to continuing aid for the world's children, particularly in underdeveloped countries. Through its maternal and child welfare services, its mass health programs, and its child nutrition programs, it is making this world a better place to live in for millions of children. You are a part of the great work being done by this special body of the United Nations, and it costs you only six cents a year. <laughs> The night music of June cascades that of loudspeakers, flows gently down Broadway. And the languorous early summer of cadence to the rhythm of blues, and the crazy songs and the torch songs that were already dim in the twenties. The ladies of the spectacular sway gracefully on the mass of beaches. The time is flashed at electronic intervals, and the hawkers and the gimmick boys drown their wares. June on Broadway, peanuts, popcorn, and mannequins dressed as brides. And the room where I was, the hospital room, the quiet voice was muted to the drifting night. Don't look so deep. Muted to pain. Danny would be all right. I'll give you my word on it. Easy for you to say. You're a doctor. You don't teach such things to say in school. It's a whole study what you should say to the friends that friends with bullet holes. Do you know? Let it be plainly understood between us, Dr. Sinsky, that with me you don't have to schmooze. Mm -hmm. With me you can come right out and... You know, uh, the doctor's telling you the truth. Good. I'll be all right. I'll, I'll go call Mrs. Tapaglia. She's waiting. Hold her. Just... For now, don't you know? Danny, I'm the doctor, huh? That's right. In this room, this is my province in here. I give the orders, huh? So lie back and waste no strain, huh? You need to build and what was left for you. That bad, I don't know. Fractured shoulder, toe, and I speak nothing of shock. This is my province, where there is pain and shock. You wish something of me, Danny? A drink of water? I should read to you, maybe? 
Wait a minute. That page I tore out of the hotel register. Handwriting experts have gone over it, Danny. The name Molly Drew was written by the hand of the deceased Lala. The, the, the bag I found in the room. At your disposal and technical, Danny. No money in it. No money from the bank robbery performed by Marty Scott, also deceased by the hand of Lala. That, that woman, the hotel manager, Mrs. Victor, I want to question her. I want to know what... It'll keep, Danny. I promise you, it'll keep. All right, I brought you something. A needle hmm. guaranteed to bring sleep to the restless. It'll sting a little, Danny. That's it, Danny. Good boy, Danny. Four days in a hospital. A novel read, Jim Rummy with Nurse Topless and chocolate-covered cherries in the Fellows and Homicide, complete with a note from Officer Robert Francis's Bob Hayward, the fun-loving sleuth. A visit from Sergeant and Mrs. Tartaglia, and beetles in brown paper bags. Also reporters who brought nothing but eight chocolate-covered cherries and pizzas. Examinations in bandage changes, solitaire, and boredom, and most talkless who some I always had two when I knocked with one. Four days in the hospital. And then the fifth morning, get up, get out of there, back to work, check in, phone calls, have none of them bring in Mrs. Victor, proprietor of Victor's on Skid Row, talk to her. I don't know what you want to talk to me about. What the police have been talking to you about for four days, Mrs. Victor. Mm, shoulder hurt, Mitch? It's a kind of long time. I got a bum shoulder myself. Don't hurt much when it rains. Hold it when the sun is enlightened. Watch out. Climb under the bed and watch out. <laughs> Got a cigarette? Uh, here. Have one of mine, Mrs. Victor. Uh, you want a light? I ain't going to chew on it. Sure, I'm on a light. Yeah. Who shot me, Mrs. Victor? You've been in the hospital. You don't know what I've been telling them cops, do you? No, I don't. Boy, I was as surprised as you was when you got shot. The lady up in 212 screamed down the hall. Her fuse was blown. So I was on the second floor with Jesus when I hear black, 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 three shots. Who was the lady? I checked out, Danny. Transfer with no baggage, according to her, uh, Mrs. Victor. Sure, according to me. If you can't believe me, who are you going to believe in this world? Well, let's talk about Lila Hunter. Who? Huh? Lila Hunter. You know who he means. The girl who registered as Molly Drew. A flitter. I could tell. I size people. Do you understand something, Mrs. Victor? Do you understand we're trying to solve a double murder and you're right in the middle of it? That Lila. That Molly, whoever she was, a flitter. That's true, that she was found dead. She'd been dead for a day when she was found. Now, think about it. Did she have any visitors last Monday? I couldn't tell. But you must have read in the papers that she was wanted for murder, didn't you? Tricky, ain't you? No paper said no Molly Drew was wanted for nothing. Now, let me tell you one thing right now. What do you want, Gina? That robbery Molly Scott was mixed up in, some of the dough turned up. Holding a guy in the Harlem precinct. He tried to make a deposit at the Ruxton National Bank on 106th Street. Cash, you caught it, called us. Keep talking to Mrs. Victor, Margaret. Yep. But you know, squad cars waiting, Donnie. What's your name? Ren Palma. Rico Palma. Why do you hold me here in jail? What do you do for a living? I have a travel agency for Trans Mexico. Airplanes. I am an agent. And this man was trapped at your agency? See, si. I tell him, I tell you, I tell everybody. Who do you want me to tell now? I tell. This was money from a bank robbery. So we took money from a bank robbery. It is for you to know it's not me. I sell tickets for a play. You know who you sold the tickets to? I remember. I remember very good. To Mrs. Jones for her and her husband to take a trip to Mexico. How long ago was that? More than a week. This time know. I remember all of it. Three one hundred dollar bills, one fifty dollar bill, brand new. So I remember. Her name was Mrs. Jones, one way to Mexico for her and her husband. Five o'clock plane, new bill. Does your Mrs. Jones make the plane? No. The airport called to me on the telephone. They say, where are Mr. and Mrs. Jones? I spoke to them. How come you're just depositing this money, Rico? Two times a month I deposit. At the beginning and at the middle. Uh, just one more thing. Mrs. Jones. The most. Very beautiful. Blonde, about five five. And blonde. Head to shoulder. Uh, like a little voice must hear on me. Kick this kick. That one I don't remember. Okay, Rico. I am an honest man. I do not speak. Okay. I'll give you a receipt for this money, then you can go. <laughs> Yep. 
looking up, Doug. Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Victor. What do you want? The man down in the interrogation room will want you to talk to What man? Now, come on, Mrs. Victor. We want you to talk to somebody. I asked you what somebody. A man named Mike Bryan. I ain't leaving here. Supper's here in ten minutes. I'm not going to miss any supper to meet no man. I ain't getting out of here. I'd get a matron to bring Mrs. Victor to the interrogation room. What do you think, Madeline? Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Any way it makes sense. Come on, let's talk to Mike Bryan. It's not very pleasant here, Danny. You know my taste. Why do you bring you to a place like this? It's the best we've got, Mike. And once we had a pillow in here, Mike, a man with taste like yours took it home. That was six years ago. It was in the paper. All right. And here, do your little act. Selena's waiting for me. Tell us again about Lila. She was before Selena. She was... Yeah? Matron out here with Mrs. Victor, Danny. Bring her in. Got another lady for you, Mike. Named Mrs. Victor. Has a hotel. Oh, come on in, Mrs. Victor. Sit down. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Mrs. Victor. You'll have supper later. Cold supper. That's what I'll have. What about it, Mike? Did you see this lady before? They come like that. Hmm? Where do you get them? I told you where. Out of whole plaza and skid row. I want to go back to my city. A little later. Now. Now I want to go back. What's the matter? Don't you like Mike? I'm not going to stay here. Not with him. Not that he can... Don't let him touch me. Get him away from me. Dear lady, I just want to assure you that I... Was get him away from me. Right, back up, Mike. Sit down. You too, Mrs. Victor. Why are you afraid of him, Mrs. Victor? Uh, he scared me once. I never got over it. Him with that gun. They go crazy fast in your jail. Why did he scare you, Mrs. Vector? I want to help you. And he brought Lila Hunter into your hotel. Oh, you, Mike Bryan, or whatever you call yourself, gangster. What's the idea of coming into my place with a gun? What's the idea of making that poor girl sign that register? What's the matter with you, anyhow? Don't you think I'm crazy? What's the matter with you? You ought to look in the mirror. That's what you ought to do. I told you, Mrs. Vector. Oh, you ought to look in the mirror. He's going to hit me. He's going to kill me. That's the way he said he would. You boys haven't been here. That does it, doesn't it, Mike? <laughs> does what? Well, you simple, Mike. You know what it does. Marty Scott took your woman, the one before Selena, Lila Hunter. <laughs> you killed Marty. I did what? Killed Marty. The Lila's gun. Then you killed Lila. Dumped her in the river. That's interesting. How do you figure all that? Like this. Marty pulled a bank job. He and Lila were taking off to Mexico. She bought tickets for both of them for the bank money. Figure it this way, Danny. What you said, the first. Lila killed Marty. Took the money. Double cross. Funny we think you got the rest of that money, Mike. Me? How? Oh. Marty didn't have it. Lila didn't have it. Somebody has to have it. The killer. Oh, how do you like that? How do you like that? Big killer, Mike. Clever. Kill a girl, pay for a funeral just to make a strike back on her. To come to you so you could tell us where she was. In a flea bag under an assumed name like a fugitive. Like a girl who's just killed Marty Scott. And held a gun on Mrs. Victor, terrified her. Oh, I wasn't scared. I was just acting. Terrified her. Told her you'd kill her unless Mrs. Victor told the story she did. Registered Lila in Skid Row, then slugged her and killed her. And what kind of a story was that about Lila phoning you for help, for money? She had money, bank loot, Marty. What about it, Mike? Nobody takes anything away from me. Marty tried it with Lila. Look what happened to both of them. Just do me a favor, Danny. Call Selena. Tell her not to wait. Broadway. My beat. 